In this introduction to fecal sludge management, you've learned a lot about different elements that need to be considered and integrated into one system, including treatment objectives, multiple technologies, operations and maintenance, resource recovery, quantification and characterization, financial considerations, legal frameworks, and planning. In this module, I'm going to provide you with an example of a city where these aspects have all been applied in a systems level approach for an innovative, adaptive, and integrated approach to fecal sludge management. Following this module, you will be able to distinguish different approaches to fecal sludge management taken in Durban, identify examples of what has worked in the service chain in Durban, and consider how management examples could be applied in other locations. Now I will take you to the city of Durban, South Africa, where the Adequini municipality employs an approach to fecal sludge management that is innovative, adaptive, and integrated. We'll start the story in August of the year 2000, when a cholera outbreak started in the KwaZulu-Natal province where Durban is located. During one year, there were over 100,000 cases with 260 deaths. A positive outcome of this unfortunate crisis was that it brought funding and recognition to sanitation and led to a policy review and promulgation of a national sanitation policy in 2001. Also in 2001, the current Adequini municipality was formed when the boundaries of the previous Durban, what is now central Durban, were greatly expanded. With this change, the city went from 1,400 square kilometers to 2,600 square kilometers. The new boundaries were very complex demographically, geographically, and in terms of existing infrastructure. They include urban, peri-urban, and rural areas. Of 3 million residents in 2001, it was estimated that 1 million did not have water or sanitation services, another million were supplied with severely run-down services, and 1 million had a high level of service with flush toilets and tap water. In addition, HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis are rife, poverty is high, and it is a water-scarce region. In South Africa, national policy states that all people have a right to basic and free sanitation and water. Adequini Water and Sanitation, or EWS, was now faced with fulfilling the right of basic sanitation to everyone within the new boundaries. In addition, the new Durban metropolitan area is undergoing rapid growth. The goal of Adequini was to find solutions that would satisfy everyone, but they had to act immediately and could not wait for perfect solutions before doing anything. Solutions needed to be developed and perfected over time. EWS set the following WASH guiding principles. Working within the boundaries of a water-scarce environment by linking sanitation systems to water supply, following the law of ECOSAN by investigating ways in which nutrients can be recovered for use in agriculture, ensuring that implementation is backed by sound scientific research through creating partnerships with local and international organizations, regularly interacting with the people they serve to ensure two-way communication and awareness through an extensive educational outreach program, and sharing of expertise with other municipalities through the MILE initiative. EWS also instituted a business approach to management, first built on the basis of their own human resources to ensure adequate capacity, then building on that foundation with a key focus on customer service. If customers are happy, they will pay for their services so you can generate adequate revenue to run your business. Revenue then needs to be spent on asset management and network expansion. EWS came up with a multifaceted approach that included waterborne sanitation in the dense urban center where a sewer was possible, shown by the blue lines in this figure. Dry toilets outside of this area where sewers would never be accessible due to the terrain and population density, 
Septic tanks, where homeowners wanted to take responsibility to install them, and ablution blocks for informal settlements. An integrated approach does not only mean multidisciplinary, it means employing different solutions throughout an area that are appropriate for a context into one integrated overall management solution. With the increased boundaries, EWS also inherited responsibility for 35,000 pit latrines that became a management problem as they became full, and most were in areas that are difficult to access with trucks. An empty model was piloted and then scaled up and currently the existing pit latrines are emptied by EWS on a five-year cycle. Starting in 2002, for sanitation provision outside the area that could be served by the sewer, EWS implemented an innovative solution with urine diversion toilets. These were two-chamber systems with alternate usage and storage with the urine going to a soakaway. This technology was selected as it was expected that during containment, sludge would degrade, become dry and spadeable, and have reduced pathogens so people could manage the fecal sludge themselves instead of relying on emptying services. Most of these areas are very difficult to access by truck. There was a massive rollout of these innovative new toilets with 1,000 installations per month and 75,000 built by 2011. As shown in this figure, this included an intensive monitoring and evaluation program that included effectiveness of the community education program, community acceptance, maintenance by households, and quality and durability of construction and hygiene. Reported problems included dissatisfaction with odors, doors, vault covers, vent pipes, and poor construction problems that were all addressed by EWS. However, following implementation, 85% of respondents reported using the urine diverting dry toilets, but only 34% reported satisfaction with using them. One of the main reasons was that they had to empty and manage fecal sludge themselves, and 80% of respondents were found not to be maintaining them properly. In addition, Researchers found that viable pathogens remained in the sludge even after the two years of storage, so it was not acceptable that the health risk was transferred to the homes instead of professional collection services. To address these realities of customers wanting the same level of service as pit latrines, pathogen destruction not as effective as thought, households that did not empty overflowing chambers, and densifying areas where it was no longer possible to bury the sludge, as of 2017, EWS has started a pilot project to provide collection, transport, and off-site treatment services for the urine-diverting dry toilet fecal sludge with service provided to households every two years. Researchers are also evaluating the possibility of incorporating poor flush toilets. In areas that still have older pit latrines, EWS continues to provide emptying services on a five-year cycle and has registered all of the locations on a municipal GIS system. To meet sanitation needs in informal settlements within the waterborne area, community ablution blocks with male and female facilities, including toilets, urinals, washing basins, and showers that all drain to the sewer, have been installed to serve people within a maximum walking distance of 100 meters. The ablution blocks also initially encountered problems due to theft and vandalism, but to solve this, the blocks were remanufactured with robust and non-valuable materials. Each block is also now allocated with a caretaker to manage the facility. EWS provides consumables such as toilet paper and cleaning materials and responds to water leaks, toilet blockages, and vandalism. Outside the waterborne urban edge, ABRs followed by wetlands are being investigated. For treatment of fecal sludge, the Laudipop pelletizer was developed for pit latrine sludge after discharging at wastewater treatment facilities was causing them to fail. Deep row entrenchment has been studied, and currently black soldier fly larvae are being evaluated for the urine diverting sludge. At the same time in parallel, EWS maintains the sewer network and 43 wastewater treatment plants.
The result, over a relatively short period of time, has been an enormous improvement in sanitation. With 74% of excreta now considered safely managed and 26% not safely managed, but with 16% of that due to sludge that is considered unsafely contained in informal pit latrines. So what are the cornerstones of this case study that could be replicated in other cities that produce these successes in what could have been seen as insurmountable management challenges? EWS has practiced solution-based thinking. They thought outside the box, selected and implemented solutions, and then continued to learn from them and adapt. They recognized the importance of progressive realization, building on what is in place. There is a strong but also dynamic regulatory framework in place to allow for this and manage risk. New solutions are first trialed at a pilot scale, which is an official status recognized by the Municipal Council, during which projects are closely monitored and include intensive public participation. Only after this phase can they be rolled out on a larger scale. In this way, policymakers and sector leaders encourage calculated risk to continue improving service delivery. There is acknowledgement involvement, and commitment from the public sector, from the national and local levels, with a commitment to the need for safe management of excreta throughout the entire service chain. Research is a foundation of this innovative approach in technology, but also in understanding community needs and underlying factors. EWS has a very strong collaboration and participatory process with the universities and applied research to address solutions, with a strong commitment to open communication and sharing of information. The focus is not just on building toilets or implementing technologies. Operation and maintenance budgets receive equal importance. The whole program is built on customer care, the national principle of Bato Pele, with people as the customer first. A switch from an infrastructure approach to a service delivery approach with a commitment to comprehensive long-term community engagement and education for mutual trust and understanding. Monitoring to ensure compliance for public and environmental health, but also success of the whole program. Solutions are context-specific, but can also be time-specific. What is right now will not necessarily be right tomorrow. For example, in rural areas, satisfaction with the urine-diverting toilets was higher, whereas closer to the waterborne infrastructure, there was much less satisfaction. Engagement of the private sector throughout the service chain, including construction of toilets, collection and transport of fecal sludge, operation of treatment facilities, and importantly, recognition of the innovation they bring. And finally, there is no one-size-fits-all approach. EWS has a culture which encourages innovation and allows mistakes, as long as they are learned from and not repeated. For more information about the approach in Etiquini, I recommend these additional sources. In summary, in this module we learned about different approaches to fecal sludge management taken in Durban, examples of what has worked in the service chain, and factors for success that could be applied in other locations. Thanks for joining. See you next time.